Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and this is now day one. Well, I've only spent a couple of hours. Um, day one of the new manifold build for the 218 inch. This is the old manifold for the 215 inch, which was fairly easy to make because the whole um, setup was designed for this. The whole um, verdict frame was designed for the 215 inch. So I have a frame which is 500 by 500 millimeter square. And it was easy to place a 215 inch in because they're only 380. So as you see, I could bought the, the whole wooden manifold from the outside of the structure. But now once this comes out, um, and you can see the steel frame, I've placed a light underneath so you can see again where the subs brief to the outside and this is that form that prevents any moisture coming in um, I've just taken the the single 18 out today and it looks just like new there's not a single problem with it um, but yeah basically when the hang on I grab one of the oh, so I had hang on uh, I had two of these just put down for the single 18 inch um, but I was planning to use these buffles for the manifold structure so basically I will have a very similar looking manifold like for the 215s but it's way more difficult to, to execute because as you see, I hardly have any width left over there once the speaker is placed on. So I have to go to the maximum width of the, uh, of the frame. But once you build a manifold like that, you can't really get to the boarding points, which are down there all around. So I will probably have to build a manifold in the way that I will have to do the bolting from underneath. Which is great because all these fixing points are tapped. So I will have to drill through through some of them and then bolt from underneath. Which is fine, but um, yeah, it gives an extra an extra difficulty to the whole to the whole fabrication so yeah this is the plan I had to move the battery up as well because uh, now I only have just enough distance between the manifold and the battery rack uh, before the battery was further down nearly an inch down so I had to relocate the brackets now I have enough space but yeah, there's definitely no space for any bigger sub than this in the future. No 21 or 24, forget that. <laughs> um, but I'm sure these two 18s will, will make justice. So yeah, this is, let's say, day one. And hopefully I can show a bit more progress tomorrow. So, this is day two. Um, I just made this. 18 mil plywood bottom plate for the manifold. I drew it all around and made two 3 mil countersunk holes for the T nuts. Because now I will have to bolt the whole structure from underneath. I also had to drill the threaded. Um, oh, hang on, I don't take it out now. But yeah, I had to drill up the, the threaded holes in the uh, in the steel frame so now I can push the the bolts up from underneath and then bore the structure down from there we have to pull all these t-nuts into the right place all around because once the whole structure is built I won't get to these anymore these will be hidden because the the buffer on each side we will come up and cover and cover these holes 
So yeah, this step is done. Let's get to the next. After five hours, this is where we are now. Uh, it, it takes longer than I thought, but yeah, probably I shouldn't be that OCD with bloody screws and all that. Um, but I thought to show you this part of the construction. So you can see there's double buffer now, but the inner buffer uh, cutout diameter is smaller. The reason is when I use these plywood buffers um, for the single one in the car, I did the cutout um, so the rubber surround wouldn't um, touch the wood. But the lip of the sub is not wide enough and all my threaded inserts they didn't have enough thickness in the wood and they kind of ripped the wood out as you see um, at some places it was just fine but over there it wasn't so that's why I decided to put another layer underneath well also to strengthen the construction but then now the insert is in that piece and the the surround of the sub doesn't reach uh, this buffer, so there's enough clearance. So this is what I was talking about, that once uh, the buffer is mounted, you can't get to the, um, the board points just like here all around. These are the ones holding the manifold to the steel frame in the car, just like there. They will be all hidden. Well, these will be hidden as well because there's gonna be another, another piece coming to double this side piece up as well. Um, so yeah, this is where it is. Let's put this on and then I can screw them together and the adhesive is going to do, do its job to hold this piece together so yeah this is where it is at the moment okay so another day spent on this manifold now structurally I think it's it's pretty much done but I'm not going to do anything more to it until it's fitted in the car and then I start to build the panels in the boot yeah, well, I think it's gonna be pretty fucking rock solid. Now this is 18 mil plywood and MDF all the way around. Every single side plus a M12 bar going across, pulling these two sides together, holding it in place. Well, to be fair, a box has six sides. This has two, <laughs> yeah these two sides really opposite sides because the rest is pretty much cut out the top is nothing and that's what it's gonna be like from underneath the car yeah I'm sure it's gonna be strong enough for the 218s but the trouble is I have a feeling that I will have to oh, can I tip it up actually one hand oh. I may have to place the speakers on the manifold outside of the car because once it's put in I won't be able to get to those bottom bolts so yeah I may have to put the subs on and leave the whole structure in somehow <laughs> that's gonna be interesting but well what can we do So yeah, this is it. They are in. It's quite a challenge. I needed my friend to give me a hand. Because, uh, yeah, they are not, not light at all. So, this is the bottom of the car. Well, where the subs are going to brief to the outside. There you are. Final stage. Finally, the manifold is in. 
we bought subs um, and I had them in the car for a few days now and I haven't put the grill on purposely just to show you guys that there's nothing to worry about at that side of the car. Um, the car is absolutely filthy after three days. Uh, UK roads in winter, you can imagine the amount of rain and, and crap you have on the road. And um, so this is where the subs are. And they are absolutely clean. There's nothing, absolutely nothing going up there. Well, obviously, I will put the ring guard phone with the grill on, so you know, there's nothing to worry about. Let's see them from the boots. Okay, oh, I don't want to touch this target. Beauty of Japanese cars. Okay, okay. So, that's where they are. Let's make a bit more light. There's not much room left. There's literally half an inch there. And hang on. Let's make a bit of light. And uh, probably another half an inch there between the battery and the manifold. Probably just enough to run the the wires over there. And also down there. Uh, Literally, yeah, a quarter of an inch, a couple of millimeters between the sub and the chassis. Yeah, just, I just managed to fit in there. So yeah, I'm gonna need a few more days to the, till I get to the point that I can actually fire them up. There are a few things to sort out before that, but then one um, 18 is going to have one amp channel from the Zapco Z400.2. So I will have around seven 800 watts for each subs, but they will hardly use any of that because, as you might have seen from previous videos, this type of infinite buffer application is very sensitive so yeah they should be fine with a couple of hundreds of watts and create something something absolutely mental we will see stay tuned please subscribe so you don't miss the next video and uh, you will have a bit of boom boom time take care